Hello guys and welcome to a new devlog. As you may know, Mikoso hosted the GeoJam 2022, a game jam where everything has to be geometric and has to follow a theme. So I decided to participate and created a game about a square getting raided by the FBI and losing his bananas. So here's how I did it. As you may know, game jams have a theme, and as I woke up in the early morning and went to check my computer, I realized the theme was So the theme is to pick a side, definitely a fun theme, I immediately opened up Lucid Spark, which is sort of an online whiteboard, and started brainstorming. Quick disclaimer here, I would like to mention before showing you the whiteboard that I brainstormed with some friends, so please do excuse some of the drawings around the whiteboard, but anyways let's continue. So I decided to make this sort of like a meme game, as you can see here I decided the best plot would be a square losing his bananas, and getting kidnapped by the FBI, I also wanted the game, to be a puzzle game, although it came out more like a platformer. Anyways I also figured out I could implement the theme, by making the square's bananas also change gravity, and allowing you to, pick the side, gravity would flow towards, or is it move towards, maybe gravitate towards, okay, who cares, the point is I decided you would pick the side gravity would move towards. So for this first day, I wanted to be able to make the movement, and gravity changing mechanics, however, I don't really like working with basic shapes as art, also known as development art. So I first jumped into a sprite and started working on my sprites. I first made the FBI sprite which is just a triangle with sunglasses, and the banana power up which turned out to be harder to draw than what I thought, but anyways all of this was reasonably easy until I got to the Tillicid. Now I had decided the game would take place in a containment facility that the player has to escape, so I needed to make an industrial Tillicid. The problem is I'm terrible at drawing metal, so I gave it a shot and... Yeah not really the best Tillicid ever, thankfully I decided to give it another go, and it seems like I came up with a better Tillicid, I even asked you guys in the Discord, and most of you agreed the second Tillicid was better. By the way, the link for the Discord is in the description. And yes I'm aware this TTS thing doesn't know how to say Tillisa properly. Anyways with my art ready I finally created a Unity project and started working in the game. First I made rule tiles, which is a way for me to make tile placement automated by giving Unity a set of rules it will follow when placing my tiles, allowing me to make levels way quicker than I normally would. I then started working on the player movement which was going well until, well, this happened. After getting several thousand errors and Unity crashing on me multiple times I finally got the movement working, and I moved on to the gravity changing bananas. At first, I made the bananas literally change gravity, however, this broke the player's movement and felt very awkward to play with. So being the smart homo sapien that I am, I decided to just rotate the entire level, I'm sure it won't lag out the game right. Anyways I quickly fixed the lag by rotating a single object containing everything in the level, instead of every single item in the level, and it turned out pretty good. By the time I finished this it had become nighttime, so to finish off the day I added a restart button in case you get stuck, and finally went to sleep. So I woke up on day 2 fairly early and was ready to start making progress on my game. First I made the pause menu which was fairly easy to implement, as all it does is stop time, and give you the choice to go back to the main menu or return to the game. After the pause menu I got started on making the main menu, first I made the background for the main menu which is just a semi-transparent black square, and a photo I made in illustrator of a bunch of bananas, which I then just move using the script I made, and now we have a nice background. As for the actual buttons of the main menu they were fairly easy to code. 
For the play button, it just changes to a certain senior level. For the options button, well it doesn't do anything, yet. And for the exit button, it just exits the game by running this simple script. Now that I finished off the main menu I decided to start working on the settings menu. First I made the actual settings menu by adding a dark background and making a volume option, which didn't actually do anything yet as I had no sound. I also went back to my options button and made it enable my, well, options menu. So for this next part, I was going to have a 5 minute long rant about how I couldn't get cannons to work in my game, but I decided to cut it out of the script, so the only thing you guys need to know is that cannons change with gravity because of a bug and that now it's a feature. And here's how the cannon turned out. So now that I finished the cannon I created a few more levels, and by the time I finished level 5, I realized I still had about 5 more hours to work on my game, so I decided I would start creating the intro cutscene for the game, and continue making the levels tomorrow. So I opened up Unity's timeline and began working on the cutscene. After about 3 hours of working on it, creating sprites for it, and adding some sound effects, here's how it turned out. Now that I had finished the cutscene the last thing I did for day 2 was to start working on a game manager that would make sure the music doesn't restart every level and also make sure the music doesn't keep playing if you go back to the main menu. I was also going to make it track your time playing because I decided I wanted to add a speedrunner mode. However it was about 1am when I finished the music part of the game manager so I decided to go to sleep. So it's already the last day and I still got to add music, sound effects, a speedrun mode because why not. And even an online leaderboard, not to mention creating the other half of my game, as I hadn't finished the levels, making a tutorial level, and adding a button system, and all of this before 8pm, because my friends decided to go to the cinema today. So I started off with very quickly creating levels, which if you want to play you can do so by checking out the link in the description. But anyways, I made like 3 levels before deciding I was going to add buttons that deactivated certain blocks. I thought this was going to take way longer however it was surprisingly easy. All I did was use my previously created event system and just play an animation whenever the player interacted with a button which makes the corresponding tiles disappear. So with this new tool for making levels in hand, I speedrun making levels, and managed to make 5 completely new levels, along with the tutorial level in a record breaking 3 hours. Now that I had finally finished the actual game I still needed to add sounds, so I started with that, however as I finished adding the sounds for the first level, I quickly realized that because I did not add the sounds from the very beginning, I would have to go level by level, adding these sounds to each enemy, banana, and player. In the end I did finish adding in the sounds, but I ended up taking two whole hours just to add them, let alone making the volume option work with all the sounds. Oh and remember that game manager that was supposed to make sure the music wouldn't continue playing when you went back to the main menu. Now that I had finished the cutscene the last thing I did for day 2 was to start working on a game manager. Well it turns out when I went to link the volume setting to the music it completely broke my game manager. Why? because the code I wrote at 1am was complete jank, and I had to completely overhaul the game manager. But anyways, after a total of 5 hours, I finally finished everything related to the sound. So by now it was 6pm which meant I had about 2 hours to create an ending for my game, a speedrunner mode, and an online leaderboard. So I put on some inspirational music, and started working as fast as I could. First I started with the speedrun mode, seeing as I overhauled the game manager this wasn't all that hard to add. All I had to do was add an option in the settings menu to enable speedrun mode, which when enabled would skip the intro cutscene, and add a timer for you, which I swiftly added to the game manager. 
Next I moved on to the ending for my game. Now I was originally going to make a cutscene, but seeing how I had no time, I decided to instead just create a scene with bananas falling on the player, and a text saying you finished the game, and daring you to try speedrun mode. Well, by now I only had about an hour and had to come up with an entire online leaderboard. It was obvious I wouldn't finish the leaderboard in time. However those of you who have followed this channel for a while know I used to make devlogs on a game about speedrunning, which thankfully happened to have an online leaderboard already, so I stole my own leaderboard, copy pasted it on my game, and as expected it worked perfectly fine. So seeing how I now had 50 minutes, to polish the game I quickly replaced the ending cutscene for the leaderboard, when playing in speedrunner mode, and added a button on the main menu which shows you the current leaderboard, I playtested the game, and everything was working fine, so as a last touch I added some very simple screen transitions and finally uploaded the game. So after the jam had ended I was excited to see in what place my game had ended up in. So I went to check my computer, and it actually did end up doing fairly well, ending up in 38th place. However I quickly realized something, remember when I said I was going to add screen transitions? Well it turns out they completely broke the leaderboard, as it somehow didn't allow players to interact, nor submit scores to the leaderboard, which essentially undermined the whole point of speedrunner mode, as now you couldn't submit scores, additionally the pause and restart button would disappear in later levels, leading to players getting stuck and not being able to restart the level which meant they had to quit the game, however in the end, I don't think many players tried speedrun mode, so this didn't affect the game too much, but it still annoys me that a simple screen transition would break the game. So this was how I made a game about a square who gets raided by the FBI, if you guys enjoyed the video I would greatly appreciate it if you guys subscribed, the channel's sub count recently doubled in the last 2 months, so let's see if we can do it again, let's try and hit 120 subs, anyways I'll see you guys in the next video.